Welcome everybody to Rose Tint Gaming. Live from the Rose Room to celebrate our 100 subscriber milestone. I thought it'd be a cool idea to give a quick tour of our recording space. Uh, currently, we are in the living room. There's the couch that we sit on. That's my spot. And there's where Eric usually sits. Let me move back a little bit. This is a PVC pipe separator to be able to lock out noise. There's some games over there. We'll get to those in a little bit. But the main focus I want to look at is this. This is our setup. I recently contacted somebody on Twitter. Uh, they were interested in the setup that we use and the equipment we use, so I thought I'd go over that. To start us off, let's take a look at the heart of the operation, our Frame Meister. For those of you that don't know, this piece of equipment uh, upscales the old systems from whatever they were intended for, for the old TVs, up to that baby. That is a Samsung, I think, 52-inch HDTV. Basically what it does is it takes the input from all the old consoles and it turns it into 1080p signal usable by the TV. Down here you can see our, it comes with a remote. Here's the switch everything plugs into. You can manually adjust everything. Turn it back there. And this is our capture card. We use an old Elgato Game Capture HD. None of the fancy crap. Uh, right here we have the Nintendo 64. That has been modified to output SCART to the Frame Meister right up above. Right next to the N64 we've got the old Spider-Man font PS3. This is a 60 gigabytes PS3. The reason why we use this is because it has backwards compatibility for both PlayStation 2 and PlayStation. But these are prone, these die very quickly. They overheat if you don't dust it out in the side vents here. Highly recommended. If you can find one that works, uh, it's great. It outputs HDMI directly next to that. These two systems are not hooked up currently. We have the TurboGrafx-16 and the PC Engine with PC Engine CD. I'll go ahead and take the case off here. There we go. So, Turbo Graphics on this side, this is the American version of the PC Engine. Uh, PC Engine Hue cards, Turbo Graphics Hue cards. The only reason we have PC Engine is so that we can play the uh, CD-based games. This has been modded for RGB for the Frame Meister up there. Uh, you can actually get RGB out here. The problem is, is the CD games. We want to be able to play the CD games uh, in RGB and have them look real pretty and nice. So we had to do this. Uh, this also, this core graphics has been modified so it plays both US and Japanese games. I'm hoping in the future we can get the turbo modified with a CD system so that we can, you know, get rid of the PC engine. But uh, for right now, this is our solution. Directly below that, we have our Wii U and our PS4. Uh, we haven't really played any PS4 games, but that those both are connected via HDMI up to the Switch up there. I'll point it out here in a sec. But everything comes together in this nice little neat package. The good thing about the Wii U is that it plays Wii games, and I think you could have seen it earlier. We have one of the wireless Wii U bars, so that is able to let us play Wii games pretty easily. Oh, I, there you go. Up there on the left side, you can see the four HDMI switch. And then on the other side, that's a splitter. I'll talk about that in a little bit. 
but right underneath the Wii U and the PS4, we have the Xbox 360 and the GameCube with Game Boy Player. Uh, you can see this SD card poking out here. This is the SD Media Launcher that was purchased off eBay so that we can run Game Boy interface to be able to, you know, control our picture. The old Game Boy Player software isn't the best, so the Game Boy interface uses an action replay CD to be able to launch homebrew software off of this SD port type device that fits into the GameCube's memory card slot. And we captured all of the Pokemon series using this setup. Uh, makes for a great picture, it's really clear. Uh, we are currently also using the GameCube component cables uh, through the back here. And those are, those are pretty hard to find. Uh, but that is currently the only thing in our entire setup that is using anything other than SCART or HDMI uh, through the FrameMeister. Directly adjacent, we're gonna move back over to this side. We've got our NES and our Super Nintendo. So the Super Nintendo is an I think it, I believe it's a one chip two unit. It ha it puts out RGB uh, natively, much like the Sega Genesis and the Sega Master System. But the NES I had to send in to Retrofixes at the same time I sent in the N64, and can't complain with their work, they're great. Uh, actually, inside this NES, there's also, well, not only a copy of Mega Man 2, but, there is blinking light win. If you don't know anything about that, basically what it does is it replaces the tray on an NES. This doesn't push down anymore. It replaces this tray so that you don't get the, the problem that most toaster NESs have where push it down over time and the 32 pin connector breaks down and then you can't play your games. So this was a this was a probably one of my best investments I've ever made. Uh, really just solved that problem. I've never had any problems with games not connecting since installing that. Then right below that, we have our Sega Master System over here on the left and the Sega Genesis, and you can just barely see the top of the 32X there. And we're gonna, what you're looking at right now is the camera trailed on the Samsung screen. We're booting up the NES. And there we have Mega Man 2. This is the quality that that little device provides when playing. You can see the screen is all full. That's when I wanna play games for ourselves. Uh, when we record, we typically use a smaller profile. All the profiles we use are off of Firebrand X's website. I'll put a link for everything I've talked about as far as modding services or, or purchasables down in the description below if you're interested. But that is a clear picture, I think. A little closer. There you go. Had to lower the blinds. It's probably the only sunny day we'll have this week up here in Seattle. Uh, up here, so this is a five-tier rack system. I really like these rack systems. Uh, but right now what we have is we have overflow of NES games. This is all the uh, bootleg Bible games. I kind of have an affinity for them. So we got Bible Adventures right there, and we've got Bible Buffet up up front. That's probably one of my favorites. Uh, extra Super Nintendo game. The rest over here, these are the Turbo Graphics games that we have, and then the PC Engine. And this is filled with a bunch of caseless PC Engine games that we have. Uh, and then right below, Turbo Graphics and the Bible Adventure games. We've got GameCube, Eric's favorite system. So 
you know, nothing to stand out-ish here. Uh, remake of uh, Metal Gear Solid 1. Really great. Pretty standard stuff. Looking to expand it pretty soon. Slide on over. To Wii games. We'll use the Wii U to play these. Uh, favorites here have to be uh, Sin and Punishment. This is a great rail shooter. Uh, not a lot of people know about. Uh, Mad World is a pretty great game. It's a stylistic fighter uh, made by Sega. All black and white and red. R mature game for the Wii. That's what I thought was cool about it. And then of course the entire Metal Slug collection. That's pretty cool. Move over to the Wii U. This is basically everything good on the Wii U, but we've got the remakes of The Legend of Zeldas, we've got Breath of the Wild, we've got Bayonetta 2. This copy of Bayonetta 2 actually came with the copy of Bayonetta 1. Uh, it's worth looking out for. This is a pretty rare game to have as far as Wii U titles go. Not crazy, but worth getting if you see it for a decent price. And of course, my favorite game, like of all time, Shovel Knight. Directly below there, my tripod can't get much further down. We have like the smallest Xbox original collection ever. Uh, <laughs> that's just things like Conker's Bad Fur Day, Jet Set Radio Future. That game is the entire reason I would own an original Xbox. So it comes with Sega GT 2002. On the back, it's Jet Set Radio Future. It's a, originally a Dreamcast game remade for the original Xbox. Uh, Xbox 360 grew up with it. You know, we've got our original Splatterhouse, or the Splatterhouse series that we played through. Uh, the Condemned. Moving over, PS3. I just recently started getting into PS3. I picked up the PS3 with the intent to pick up PS1 and PS2 games, but recently I've just been collecting all of these, you know, compilation packs, Ratchet and Clank, Silent Hill, Sly Cooper, Metal Gear Solid. It's just, I don't need to have 10 games when I can play them all on one system in HD is my thinking. So that's what I've been doing recently for the PS3 is picking up those, you know, compilation disc sets. Uh, right next to that is PS4 and PS1. We currently only have two PS1 games. We've got the original Tomba. That's kind of a cult classic right now. I'm not gonna talk too much about that. And Punky Skunk. I thought Punky Skunk was hilarious because it's made by Jaleco. Uh, they're a company that I liked on the NES. They made a bunch of dumb games, and then they try to release a 2D platformer on the PlayStation. But just look at this. That looks wacky, 90s, and I just, I just had to have it. Uh, right next to that, some more compilations. You've got, you know, Mega Man 1 through 6, and then 7 through 10. Uh, down here is Crash Insane Trilogy. Bloodborne, the Dark Souls games, of course, Resident Evil 4. So directly next to that, we have this bookcase that contains a bunch of just random fixed parts for the systems over there. But on top of that, we have Game Boy and Game Boy Color games, Game Boy Advance. These nail polish racks purchased through Amazon. They're great for displaying these games. Uh, My Life in Gaming, we stole that idea from My Life in Gaming, and it looks great. Uh, nothing too crazy up at the top. Bunch of Mario Lands and Wario Lands, Kirby's, Pokemon, Castlevania. Down towards the bottom, though, we have Kid Dracula. That's an amazing platformer. It's a spoof on the original Castlevania games. And Trip World is actually a Europe and Japan exclusive platformer. It's a lot like the Kirby's Dream Land games with how cutesy it is and transforming abilities, but it fetches a pretty high price. I'm pretty lucky to have that. And of course, we've got the Zelda games for Game Boy Color, the Game Boy Color Metal Gear Solid, and Shantae. 
Uh, my favorite games of all time right here are these two. We've got the Metroid Zero Mission and the Metroid Fusion. I think these two games stand out on top of any other Metroid game, bar none. These are great games, should be played. So directly to the left of the Game Boy games, we have the NES games. It's another uh, dowel rack system. I really like that system. It show, displays everything pretty well, makes everything easy to see and pick from. Uh, and I like how these shelving systems limit my ability to purchase. So it's like if I, you can see down there, I've got a couple of rods, save space rods, keeping everything pushed together. But if I wanted any more, you know, Super Nintendo, I'd have to get rid of something to make it fit on this shelf. It lets me, makes me limit what I have, and so I don't have just a bunch of garbage sitting around that's doing nothing. So, things that are important up here, everything that's over $100 is in its own little special plastic case. You can see Bomberman 2 up there, uh, Bubble Bobble Part 2, Bucky O'Hare, and of course, little Samson sits up here. That's our holy grail as far as our collection goes. Uh, right behind that, you've got Action 52, and so on down the line. There we go. So we've got all our Super Nintendo games until we get to Super Famicom. Right, so really important things up here. We've got, you know, Chrono Trigger, all the things that everybody's looking for. Earthbound's over here somewhere. We've got our Evo. That's pretty cool. Uh, Harvest Moon's there. You know, we got the Mega Man X's. We're gonna finish this series eventually, I swear. I swear we're gonna finish Mega Man X. You know, Mega Man 7. Uh, nothing too, you know, Wild Guns is down here. Uh, everything that we have is in these little plastic sleeves, protect the pins, make sure nothing gets damaged over time. Super Famicom games, uh, our Super Nintendo is actually modified so that and it's just an easy, you remove the piece of plastic in the slot that these sit on. And I am as low as I can go right now, so that's about as good as it's gonna get, is our N64 collection. There's not a whole lot else that I want for N64. And you can see, as we've moved down, we've lost shelves. So it's like, I believe five? No, four. Four for NES. Then you've got three for Super. And finally two for N64. I grew up with a N64 and then moved on to a GameCube, but I just don't like most of what's on this library. Everything I have here is something that's worth keeping. Uh, maybe except for both of those Turoks, I don't think I need. But everything else is, I think, pretty solid. Got the Zeldas over there, Mario Golf, Mario Kart, you know, coming back over this way, what do we got? Mario Parties down here. And these labels actually are, I don't like these labels. These are uh, from Etsy, just some random Etsy seller. Nobody that I can recommend. But uh, if you were going to get end labels for your N64 carts, I would make sure that they fit that whole bar across. This just kind of looks dumb, in my opinion. It doesn't come all the way down and it doesn't come all the way across. But they do for now, I suppose. Let's you see without pulling out every single cart. Now let's move over to the Sega shelf. We'll start at the bottom and move up. Uh, starting down at the bottom, we have an almost complete 32X library. I'm missing, I think, a soccer game, a baseball game, and the $300 Spider-Man game. That's about it. So every, this is the entire almost library of the 32X, the add-on for the Sega Genesis. You got really good games, you know, Knuckles Chaotix, uh, Calibri, it's a shooter where you play as a hummingbird. That's really weird, really good actually. Uh, some of the stinkers down here is a Star Trek Starfleet Academy Starship Bridge Simulator. This game is absolute trash. Moving up a little bit, see if I can move back some. Get a better picture. All right, yeah. So you've got 
Oh, what stand out is you can see the red one right there. That's Maximum Carnage. Moving down, we got uh, Sonic and Knuckles. That's the big bulgy one there at the end. Toe Jam and Earl, Truxton. Oh my God, great shooter, amazing game. Whoops, throw you back there. And you can see here, these also have these uh, slide pieces, just like the N64 and the Super Nintendo. And actually, that's a good point. NES up there, they all have the regular NES black boxes for protection. Super Nintendo, they all came with the Super Nintendo plastic pieces, but Sega Genesis and N64, I had to buy these as an aftermarket real retailer uh, from Global Game Gear. They work wonderful. Uh, some people are probably losing their mind right now because my Genesis and Master System games right up there aren't in boxes. I don't collect boxes. I, you can collect whatever you collect. I just don't understand why you would pay money for a box. So up here we have Master System games and you can see here they all have these end labels just like the 32X down there and the N64. These are aftermarket. You know, they don't come with uh, this. You can see the color difference. They, they work pretty well though, and work is a good solution for people that don't like collecting boxes. Poor, poor Rampage. But yeah, we got Alex Kidd over here. Other things that are important, Fantasy Zone and Fantasy Zone 2. Uh, Outrun, really dig Outrun. Oh, Michael Jackson's Moonwalker. Watch that. And you can see, like, that's the entire living room, right? All the games are over here. Bookshelf, bookshelf, entertainment system. Then here's the separator that we made with PVC pipe. That's it. And people often ask where I keep my controllers. And now this is kind of dark and probably pretty echoey, but you can see I use a shoe system. This is what you would buy. I think I bought that at Walmart for like five bucks. Just hangs on the back of a door that we don't use, that we don't go in, it's a closet. And I just store all my controllers in there. So right, we're looking at the wave birds on top there. We've got PS3, PS4, Xbox 360 come down a little bit more there's the the weendom chuck cable falling out and you know turbo graphics and pc engine and this works really really well for storage saves a ton of space we operate out of a you know just our apartment living room and works for us and that is about everything for the rose room you can see we have a bunch of boxes we're gonna be moving soon and there's Eric's keyboard and all of his cursed items. And that's everything for the Rose Room. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope this helped, or you liked it, or something.